So let's talk about preventing disaster with the reef tank. Now, number one on my list to do that is generator. And I feel so strongly about having a generator. I actually have two of them. So I've got a full house backup generator that's 5,500 watts. And it does pretty much power most of the um, key items in the house, but it also powers most of the equipment that I have in my two systems, which is awesome. And so there is no interruption in power with these full house backup generators because they're automatic. And once that utility power is lost, they kick right on. So it's, it's great. And this one is a uh, propane unit. So I have a hundred gallon propane tank and I believe it could last four or five days without having to refill that tank, which is fantastic. So the other one I have is another propane generator, but this one's portable. And you don't see a lot of portable propane generators around. And it is also tied into a 100 gallon propane tank. It's a separate tank from the other tank. And again, it could probably last four or five days, but it's a pull start, so it's manual and it's not gonna be automatic, which you know has its drawbacks, but it's, it's a backup to my backup generator. So it's, it's something that I always um, li like to have on hand. Years ago, I had a gas powered portable generator and the problem with those is you know again you have to their pull start but the problem is you have to maybe every eight hours or so refill them with gasoline and I also recall during Superstorm Sandy many many years ago that uh, there was a gas shortage so with propane if you have a, uh, a larger tank that you can you know get refilled the supply in terms of having the fuel to run that portable generator is, is going to be a lot larger and the time frame a lot longer in terms of running it. So I certainly would um, advise anybody thinking about a portable generator to try to get a hold of a propane one. Now at the very least, I would recommend if you cannot afford a generator, and, and these smaller generators, the Polestar ones, only run a few hundred dollars, so it's not a major expense. but by the, um, the very least, I would say get a battery powered backup that can run some recirculating pumps because it's important to at least be able to oxygenate the water during a blackout or power outage and to uh, just kind of get that flow going. If you can't have your filter running in terms of return pump, then at least have some flow going on in the tank. That'll help a little bit. What else is important in terms of preventing a disaster? I think redundancy in terms of equipment is very important. I like to have two return pumps for my system. So for each tank, I have two return pumps that run constantly. If you have a problem with one of them, hey, at least you have a backup and the tank can limp along with one of them. So you never know. And it could be a return pump or it could be lighting. You just kind of have to figure out what pieces of equipment are vital and important and make sure you have you know something on hand as a backup. A controller in my mind is very valuable to prevent a disaster and I use that uh, controller for monitoring purposes so I have email as well as text alerts set up for both of my controllers to alert me if there's any issues with primers getting out of whack so if the temperature is too high or too low if the um, salinity is too high or too low if the uh, pH is too high or too low anything I've also got uh, leak sensors, monitors to tell me whether or not there's any water on the floor. So this is great. You know, if, if any issues pop up, I get an email or, or a text alert notifying me of the problem if I'm not home. So if I'm on a vacation, it's great. And what I also do is I have webcam set up. So I have a Nest Cam set up on my 187 gallon tank on the sump. And I might set one up as well for my 225 gallon tank. So I'm getting, a, you know, if I'm getting an alert and something's going on, I can see the sump. You know, is the skimmer overflowing? Is there um, the water level too low in the sump? There's just a whole bunch of things you could look at on the webcam in conjunction with having these, you know, text and email alerts set up for the parameters. So I think it's a great, great idea to have a, uh, a controller that can do that for you, just to keep you abreast of what's happening. But I, I just find it, um, I, I cannot go away on vacation without the, uh, that kind of configuration set up in terms of the alerts and the webcams. And I also have a live 24-7 webcam on YouTube 
for my 187 gallon tank and maybe um, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to set one up for my 225 gallon tank so I'll have to think about that but webcams are really really um, great things to have as well. The last point I want to make about preventing disasters is preventative maintenance. Every three months I perform thorough maintenance on my return pumps to make sure they're all cleaned out. I don't want them to be seizing up and not operating so by doing that preventative maintenance uh, it uh, tends to nip that in the bud. I also do ma maintenance on my peristaltic dosing pumps to make sure that those are running smoothly. Anything in terms of having a pump, uh, you know, the skimmer pump, I make sure I clean that out every few months. It's really important and that can go a long way to uh, make sure that you don't have any problems with the tank. Well, that will do it for this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already. I also want to remind you about my frag store on reefbum.com. I will leave links in the video description below. I will also leave links for my equipment store. I do sell GHL, Royal Exclusive, and Pax Bellum equipment, as well as Reef Octopus Calcium and Calc Reactors. Many of these products I do use personally on my tanks. And lastly, if you are interested, I do offer an online reef keeping master class which focuses on SPS dominant reefs. Hey, I really appreciate the view. Until next time, be safe and be well. Later.